do with the engine we've had just finicky and the vibrate you know things like fuel tank leaks we've just had everything what you could imagine so it's in you know we've had the odd engine but uh, it's uh, these things you've got to rev so much to keep up with the patterns like you know I went off with John the other night and uh, it was just it, 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 it devastates you does it just pull away from you like you're on a, a one two five you know so you were kicking lumps out of him leaving the line oh i knew he was going to pass me soon as <laughs> this so i'll get my own back for a bit good luck michael Thank cheers thanks very much there's uh, philip mccallan and hi john now young philip how are you not bad at all back on smile i think back to the 80s of the manx grand prix for you i think you did the double didn't you yeah it did indeed it was 89 88 88 yeah, yeah it was superb i remember it so 250? well 250 yes and i remember sitting on this line and i remember my stomach i remember tightening on it and i the minute i let the clutch out i just forgot about everything and, and rode as fast as i could so it was a great great race that i'll never forget thanks philip thanks for your time good to speak to philip mccallan got to hello Sally you alright and uh, Jamie Coward here for all beard on the side of that hello young man how you doing you alright yeah can you do what you did last year push the pace you did uh, that's the plan but practice has been short so I've just got to got to be uh, play it sensible as well you know sometimes so if we get some pit boards out there and uh, hopefully we can uh, just read them and just judge it off that good luck thank you thank you very much Jamie Coward you can hear that fired up Alan Oversby's here as well Alan's in the position now two minutes good before the start of the race John McGuinness throws his right leg over the pattern listen to that Let Alan Oversby just roll forward a little bit it's the Honda Davies Motorsport bike, obviously his teammate Dom Herbertson is not going to be starting now. Damp patches, that board has changed quite a lot from when we started earlier on today. Damp patches at the entry and also the exit of Ramsey Hairpin. So the rest of the 37 and three quarter mountain circuit, mile mountain circuit, has tight brightened up a little bit and the sun's shining here across the start line. It doesn't look good with all the Bennett's livery. It's the Bennett Senior Classic TT. The team windfield pattern rolls itself to the front of the start line there right next to Mr Kermode on the black things gives a thumbs up so he's in position the ITV4 boys are there with the cameras ready to go they don't need these big cameras nowadays Tim the size of the camera he's got there is tiny absolutely minuscule unbelievable the size of the cameras one minute to go before the start of the Bennett Senior Classic TT Tim Glover's going to take him away Yes, and underneath that uh, Bennett's uh, archway, the starting archway, and John McGuinness waved to someone, possibly family or friends, that he recognised on his way. So pretty relaxed as he went underneath there, uh, ready to start. And, uh, well, this will uh, brought back uh, some memories. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen John McGuinness about to start a race here around the mountain course half a minute 25 seconds in fact john Wait, mcginnis waving to more people uh, from underneath there he's very very relaxed indeed on that team winfield pattern it's uh, mum of course as uh, we heard this morning on the chat show with chris kinley and beth Espy. 10 seconds to go is over uh, for, uh, for, to see him back making his comeback it's his racing comeback McGuinness gets this race underway. Next to be Alan Obersby on the Davies Motorsport Honda. Not going to talk too much, but this is the Norton with Jamie Coward, so you can hear the bikes away. Ripleyland Racing, Sealy and Michael Rutter now. And now the MV, it's Ian Locker. Additional uh, non-starter, it would appear. Can't see the uh, John Chapman Racing Honda of David Johnson because under the arch is number seven, Joey Thompson, on the uh, Gothland Garage Norton. Changing through the box as it heads down towards Spray Hill. No number eight, as we know. Uh, Dominic Herbertson, a non-starter on the Davies Motorsport Yamaha. So here's Ollie Linzel. On the 
Enfield and here's Maria Costello looked a racy start that did from Maria Costello on the uh, Team Booger Racing pattern uh, no one starting at 11 and 12 so the next away will be number 13 that's the Davies Motorsport Honda of Lee Johnson that'll be followed by the CNS Racing Honda of James Hillier Johnston away tap on the shoulder for Hillier next The power of Bill Swallow is away. It's a bit gingerly though. Not for Chris Swallow though on the end field. And away Danny Webb on the Norton. Slow start, but Davy Todd's away on another Norton next. And the Izzard Racing Norton of Michael Russell's away. No one at 20, a non starter for Horse Saiga, unfortunately, but next away will be the Morrison Ann Hughes. Honda of Chris McGarn. McGarn at 35, 20 seconds to leave is 27, Steve Ferguson and the Greenall Racing Honda. Twenty-eight away, Philip McGurk. Twenty-three, Peter Boast on the DM Engineering Honda. Thirty-two, John Lee Pemberton on the Norton. David Allen Green, Celia Bob Owen, number twenty-five, next away. Chas Morton and Norton of Mark Parrott away. Eventually, 41, Richard Wilson on the Drixton Honda. The Celia of Heffin Owen. Next away will be John Bart, number 39, but let's go to Glenn Helen and Dave Christian. Yes, thanks, Tim. We're waiting the arrival of the first man on the road. Should be John McGuinness. Uh, expecting to see him any time shortly. Uh, just getting engine noise now from up the valley, bouncing off the uh, sides of this valley here at Glen Helen. Uh, the first bike into Glen Helen 2 flicks out of there. Little flick to the right, down a gear, in the left hand, and that's John McGuinness. Absolutely inch perfect as always. Uh, McGuinness safely through here on his opening lap. And uh, may have a little bit of a wait now because his qualifying times were very, very quick. That uh, 10 second starting difference is clearly a little bit longer. As Alan Oversby comes into the left hander here. He gets onto the power 10.2, so the gap uh, 10 seconds. John McGuinness pulled out, and Alan Overs beat him. This man's a little bit quicker. That's Jamie Coward. Uh, Coward, no, just a second down on Overs V. So uh, Jamie Coward, not quite as quick a start as it appeared. And uh, Michael Rutter through. Uh, Michael, uh, not as quick as Jamie Coward either. So. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, in that order on corrected time. But I think uh, Maria Costello might just interfere with that top order. Uh, her qualifying times were pretty sharp. A uh, little bit of a gap now between uh, Michael Rutter and uh, number five, Ian Locker. And, uh, of course, uh, with Davo Johnson not starting as well, we might have an b even bigger gap as we await the arrival of Joey Thompson. 
And uh, the road does go quiet here for a moment. I just have a little uh, little listen, see if I can't get any engine noise on the effects microphone. Yes, I can hear engine noise as they wind their way up from uh, the uh, Glenmore and the Black Dub, which is a bit further down the valley. And the machine now flicks its way out of Glen Helen 2. Down a gear, knee out, in to the left-hander. That is number seven, Joey Thompson. And he's closely followed on the road by Maria Costello. So Maria Costello well up on corrected time. She moves into second place on this opening lap. And number nine, Ollie Linsdall, safely through here on his uh, opening lap as well. But uh, it is the two patterns at the top of the table at the moment. Number one, John McGuinness leads number 10, Maria Costello, by nine seconds. Uh, it'd be interesting to see Chris McGarn's time when he gets through here. It went really, really well in qualifying, I think sixth quickest. Uh, which is going to push him into the top 10, but he's starting in 21st in the batting order. That's 13 through uh, Lee Johnston. And Lee Johnston uh, into sixth place at the moment. That's provisional low because, like I said, we do need uh, Chris McGarn, uh, the machine number 36. Uh, he started in 21st place and was right up there after uh, qualifying, which uh, was a little bit limited, to be fair. That's 14, James Hillier through now. Uh, Hillier safely through on his opening lap and uh, being caught on the road by uh, 16, I think that was Chris Swallow. And Chris Swallow moves into the top five, fifth place at the moment for Chris Swallow. But, uh, we'll wait for uh, Chris McGarn before we confirm that, but it is clear that the two patterns out on uh, on their own at the front. Uh, John McGuinness leads Maria Costello, number one, leads number 10 by nine seconds at Glen Helen on the opening lap. Although, to be fair, uh, there's a little bit of race distance to go just yet. And uh, as we all know with uh, these races, uh, they can be a little bit attritional. That's uh, 17, Danny Webb safely through on his opening lap. It looks like he's being caught on the road, though, because uh, 19 is right up there. And they're with him, Michael Russell. Uh, Russell moves into eighth place. He's ahead of Danny Webb on corrected time. And he might just get a sight of him uh, down Crunk of Voddy as they make their climb up. Craig Willies here and onto that long straight uh, where they'll be getting tucked in, trying to keep out of the uh, wind if they can. John McGuinness up the left bridge already. 35 through now. That is Chris McGann. And Chris McGann doesn't make an impression at the top end of the leaderboard. Tenth place for Chris McGann. Tenth place for Chris McGann on the opening lap. Just half a second down on ninth place, James Hillier. 27 comes through now. That's Steve Ferguson. And Steve Ferguson, where does he drop in? Twelfth place. Twelfth quickest at the moment, Steve Ferguson. Uh, so a reasonably steady opening sector. Well, he gets his... Uh, Gets his eye in, gets those uh, damp patches properly logged out in the mind, and then uh, he can uh, start to push on a little bit. Two together now, 28 and 23 together on the road. 23, Pete Boast, 28, Phil McGurk. So Pete Boast just uh, into 13th place, just behind uh, 12th place, Steve Ferguson. And uh, three seconds the gap between those two. But it's uh, McGuinness and Costello at the top of the tree at Glen Helen. Nine seconds the difference between number one and number ten. 32 comes through now, John Lee Temberton. Doesn't threaten the top end of the leaderboard, but uh, he's being caught uh, on the road by uh, 25, Bob Owen. And Bob Owen will get a look at him again down Cronkavody. And third place at Glen Helen on lap one, number two, Alan Oversby. He is just one second down on Maria Costello. In fourth place, number three, Jamie Coward. Jamie Coward, one second down on Oversby. And in fifth, making up the top five, number 16, Chris Swallow, just half a second down on Jamie Coward. Uh, the first three now through Balaf Bridge, John McGuinness, Jamie Coward and Michael Rutter. But uh, again, it is that uh, higher start number, Chris Swallow and Maria Costello, that will uh, be the difference. Number 24, safely through now, Heffern Owen. And while I was talking there, we also had Richard Wilson and Mark Parrott through. Richard Wilson in 16th place, Mark Parrott in 17th, Heffern Owen 21st at the moment. At Balaf Bridge, I can tell you that Jamie Coward has now moved ahead of Maria Costello. So Jamie Coward up to second, Maria Costello just one second down on Jamie Coward. So McGuinness leads Coward at Balaf by 18 seconds. Third place, number 10, Maria Costello. Back to you at the grandstand. Wherever you live in the world, IOM TT Travel can book everything for the perfect trip to the TT or Classic TT races, and all it takes is a deposit to secure. You can choose from the biggest range of campsites, glamping, and hotels at iomtt.com, 
and we have great inclusive packages for all budgets. Check us out at the travel shop at the rear of the main grandstand, speak to our expert travel advisors today and you could walk away with TT 2019 all sorted. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? No joy for that MV of Ian Locker, retired at Union Mills, and Bill Swallow has retired at Belaf. At Belaf Bridge, John McGuinness leads number three, Jamie Coward, by 18 and a half seconds. Coward, in turn, is 1.3 ahead of number 10, Maria Costello, who is ahead of uh, Michael Rutter in fourth. The gap there, 1.7. Fifth is number 16, Chris Swallow, just one second down on Rutter. Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy Moore. Yeah, well, we can hear them coming down through. We assume it's John McGuinness. It sounds like John McGuinness coming into Ramsey. Certainly the wind direction here is giving us a really good time. Out soon from Milntown, I would think you'd be able to hear him going down through the conquer trees. And certainly it reminds me of the time Dave Roper was kind of out on the Grand Prix on the Benelli. But John McGuinness has broken the beam down the road. And here he is at Ramsey Hairpin on lap number one, sweeping out Bruce Anstey style down through, down into bottom gear probably the distinctive Lancashire red rose on his helmet listen to him going away Faultless on the gear change as they head up to us. He heads up towards the waterwork. So John McGuinness breaks the sunshine, breaks the beam down here at Balaf Bridge. It was an 18-second advantage over Jamie Coward. But this is only the first lap, remember. And certainly uh, John McGuinness setting the standard out there. 18 seconds it was at Balaf Bridge. We have got a bit of a time to wait before we hear and see the single coming towards us. But a flash there from the exit there from Whitegate's indicator that Jamie Coward is here at Ramsey Hairpin. It's out to 24 seconds now. Jamie Coward holding on to that second place at the moment. Just a little bit slow getting it on the pipe as he goes away, but certainly it chimes in there on the second of the right-handers that takes him up the sweep left. Then another right-hander which takes you into waterworks, but Jamie Coward, number three on the Norton, safely through, but 24 we'll say it's 25 really it's 24.860 seconds that he is down on John McGuinness but we've got to await for the arrival off number 10 Maria Costello disappointment already for Ian Locker out there at Union Mills a beautiful sounding MV Augusta but only getting as far as Union Mills so Maria Costello safely through Balaf Bridge holding on to that third place but only 1.3 seconds down on Jamie Coward a big machine to handle through over the rough bumps on the approach to Ramsey. So we'll have to see how Maria's got on with that as she can, uh, breaks the beam very, very shortly indeed. We can hear the, the pattern coming up through May Hill. There she is now, just broken the beam down. It's dropped to four seconds that Jamie Coward has the advantage over Maria Costello. But Maria Costello holding on to third. Listen to her through Ramsey. Absolutely up through the box and away she goes. So uh, again, the mortality rate on the machinery in the early stages of this is uh, reflecting on the positions. But the next machine into view just takes the left out edge out. It is number seven. It's Joey Thompson who's here with us now. So it would appear that Michael Rutter possibly have gone missing on the run to Balap Bridge and Alan Oversby as well on the approach. But another machine into view and that is number 13. Takes it down tight to the inside. Just has to give it a bit of a handful to get it on there. It is John McGuinness who holds a 24. Uh, 0 0.8 second advantage over in second place number three Jamie Coward Jamie Coward in turn is four and a half seconds ahead of in third position number 10 Maria Costello but look out for number 16 he's here with us now Chris Swallow going well on the end field just one and a half seconds down on Maria Costello through Ramsey Airpin is number 13 Lee Johnston and he is four and a half seconds down on Chris Swallow Number 14 is here with us now, that is James Hillier, but he is in holding on to sixth place, number 14, James Hillier, but 27 and a half seconds down 
on Lee Johnston. And then off those who have gone through so far, it's number seven, appropriately enough, in seventh place, Joey Thompson. But 16 and a half seconds he has to catch up on number 14, James Hillier. So between number six in sixth place, number 14, James Hillier, seventh place, Joey Thompson. But 16 seconds separating them. But the close battle is between Chris Swallow and Maria Costello. Can the single take over the advantage of the twin as number 19 is here with us? 19, Michael Russell. Closely followed there by Danny Webb on the Tony Dunnell machine. And certainly let's see how they slot into it. Well, in sixth place now, it's Michael Russell. He's 19 seconds down on Lee Johnson. In seventh place then, that puts James Hillier. Eight seconds, eight and a half seconds down on Michael Ruttle, Rutter. Uh, Russell, sorry, my apologies. And uh, Chris McGahn should be with us uh, shortly. Uh, number 35, Chris McGahn. That sounds like him, and it certainly is. Looks like him as well. But somebody, I uh, uh, just didn't quite catch it, but somebody is make, uh, Michael Rutter making adjustments just before Ramsey on the single cylinder machine. So Michael Rutter. Uh, safe, but uh, making adjustments, and uh, we'll just give you a quick rundown on that. Michael Russell up, Chris McGahn holding on to eight. There's 27 is here with us now, Steve Ferguson. So let's run through that again. Leading John McGuinness by 24 seconds from in second place, number three, Jamie Coward. Jamie and Coward in turn has a four and a half second advantage over in third, number 10, Maria Costello. Fourth, what a performance! Chris Swallow only one and a half seconds down. On Maria Costello is 28 and 23 or safe. We'll slot them in there now. Fifth place for Lee Johnston. Four and a half seconds down on Chris Swallow. In sixth, Michael Russell. 19 seconds down on Lee Johnson. And then it is seventh, James Hillier. Eighth, Chris McGahn. Ninth, Danny Webb. Tenth, Steve Ferguson. Eleventh, Joey Thompson. Twelfth, Peter Post. 13th, Phil McGurk. And 14th, number 32, John Lee Pemberton. Back to the grandstand. Book now for TT 2019 with IOM TT Travel, an official travel partner of the TT races. With the biggest range of accommodation options, there's something for everyone from superb campsites with great atmosphere to classy glamping and top of the range hotels. IOM TT Travel will make planning for TT 2019 a pleasure. You can also book coach tours around the TT course, motorcycle hire, and tickets for events and activities. Visit IOMTT.com or pop into the travel shop at the rear of the main grandstand today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Light is on for number one, John McGuinness at Cronk Namona to finish first. First, you have to finish at the retirements. Locker, retired at Union Mills. Bill Swallow, retired at Balaf. Ollie Linsdale, retired at Solby Bridge. Davy Todd, retired at Greba Bridge. Alan Oversby, retired at Bagarrow. Johnny Barton, retired at Ballacrane. Rutter, as we heard, making adjustments in the Ramsey area. Looking back at the bungalow, I can tell you that uh, Maria Costello has uh, just uh, closed the gap on second place, number three, Jamie Coward. Number ten, Maria Costello, just 1.2 now behind Coward. I think the superior power of the pattern up the mountain has uh, clawed her back into position and she's 4.3 now ahead of fourth place, number 16 Chris Swallow, but it's all eyes now on Glen Crutchley Road and uh, John McGuinness and uh, he should be coming into view now on that green pattern of Roger Winfield. Here he is, crosses the line now. 110.51 miles per hour for John McGuinness. 20 minutes, 29.097 seconds, 110.510 miles per hour. Light is on for number three, Jamie Coward at Cronk Nivona, and the gap at Cronk Nivona, McGuinness enjoys over Coward is 36.9. So uh, lap record, well, we're a little bit off that, but uh, John McGuinness certainly is uh, very much on it from a standing start. We were below the 20 minutes, 19 minutes, 58.394 seconds. That is 113.342 miles per hour. Let's go back to the 
leaderboard and it's trust number three Jamie Coward that is at Cronk Nimona and he is now at the grandstand and the gap now is 38.3 Jamie Coward let's uh, just check on that uh, Jamie Coward 107.170 on the Norton impressive stuff from Jamie Coward obviously massively underpowered compared to the patterns but a very respectable 107.170 light is on for number 10 at Cronk Nimona that of course is Maria Costello so uh, coming down the mountain uh, how much is uh, coward as he uh, maintains station or as Maria continued to uh, eat into that lead uh, that uh, coward had it's very narrow and uh, it was uh, a Kronk pneumonia. It had come down to less than a second. Now, the klaxon sound of it, I think that's because the Marshalls bike's coming in as opposed to the number 10 bike of Maria Costello. Indeed it is. And uh, we can hear a pattern approaching. Here she is. a little bit between Kronk Nimona and here because uh, it's 1.8 that she's behind Coward number 10 Maria Costello at 1.855 seconds behind but Jamie Coward in turn is 38.3 down on our leader John McGuinness Maria Costello a lap of 21 minutes 9.259 seconds or 107.014 miles per hour and uh, next interview is number 13, Lee Johnston. And he's 5.1 seconds down on Maria Costello. Lee Johnston, 106.584 miles per hour. Klaxon has sounded. And uh, a bike uh, coming into view. I'm just trying to see the number. It is number seven. That's Joey Thompson on the Norton. Let's go down to Chris Kinley. Yeah, we talked to him before the start of the race while he was eating his jelly babies and he wanted to go to the little boy's room, but Joey's just stopped there now. And that's it. this looks scheduled, actually, to be honest, this stop, to be honest. The rear stands in, and obviously no tight warmers, nothing chucked on. He's no change of wheels. I know this be fuel for him, a bit of liquid, a bit of that energy stuff that they have, and just a full brim tank for the number seven, the Goatland machine. He's very correct on me on that one as well. You've got to pronounce it correct, being from Yorkshire. But Joey Thompson in the pits at the moment. Another rider went through as Joey just came in too. So we were talking about this with Tim O'Hanlon. There's another one that's going to come in the pits as well. Not sure who that is at the moment. As we look up the road to see who that is, Joey is still in. So losing a little bit of time. Rider goes through. I think that's Hillier, I think, went straight through. Just waiting to see how long Joey Thompson is in the pits. Joey just about to leave us here now. So Joey's been in so far. Let's have a little look, see if it'll come up for us. 57, 58, 59, 60, well, one minute. Yeah, one minute, point eight five four seconds for Joey Thompson in the pit stem, so that'll drop him down a bit. Back to you. Certainly will. In the meantime, as uh, Michael Russell just passes us at 104 exactly for Michael Russell on the Norton, number 19. Uh, number 14, James Hillier safely through at 102.11. And number 16, Chris Swallow on that. Linsdall Enfield at 106.76. That was number 17, Danny Webb, just through at 101.23 on another Norton. Uh, so Swallow is in fourth, and he is 2.9 seconds behind Costello in third. But McGuinness leads. Let's go to Glen Helen, Dave Christian. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Just waiting the arrival of the first man on the road now. It is engine noise coming up the valley. It's on the right timing for John McGuinness. A machine flashes out of Glen Helen too. That little flick to the right, down the gear, into the corner. And here's John McGuinness. Beautiful line as always. Uh, knows, of course, exceptionally well, clearly. And uh, he is safely through here on his second lap. Uh, looking at the uh, speed advantage those patterns have, we had a little look at the uh, Solby speed trap on lap one. John McGuinness, quickest man through at 142.2. Uh, Maria Costello, second fastest, 141.3. And then there was a bit of a fall off. Uh, Lee Johnson at 137, then Jamie Coward 134, and Joey Thompson 132. So clearly in the in the straight line, the patterns are uh, uh, the boys to beat. And of course, that climb up the mountain 
uh, we saw that uh, uh, Joey, uh, Jamie Coward's advantage over Maria Costello started to dwindle a little bit as soon as they started that climb. Uh, so it's uh, clear that the patterns have the advantage, uh, but uh, Jamie Coward's given it a good go, and uh, that ding-dong between him and Maria Costello, just two seconds at the grandstand, well, 1.8, but we'll call that two. Uh, two seconds at the grandstand and even Chris Swallow he's only three seconds behind Costello uh, the second man on the road is Jamie Coward and he is safely through here the advantage John McGuinness had at the grandstand was 38 seconds it's 46 now and uh, we noticed from the qualifying times, uh, John McGuinness about a minute or so quicker uh, per lap. And uh, uh, that is going to make a very, very healthy lead. And uh, he'll have to start thinking about machine conservation at some stage. Uh, but uh, Jamie Coward, 46 seconds that gap. Uh, next machine on the road should be Maria Costello. And uh, we've got a minute or so on corrected time before she gets here. Uh, let's just have a look at the movers and the shakers lower down the field. Uh, from lap one at Glen Helen, Josh Daly, number 47. He started 34th. He was holding 23rd place. Uh, so uh, just over 10 places moved there for Josh Daly. Number 41, Richard Wilson, started 28th. He was up to 16th. And this is, again, Glen Helen at lap one. Uh, number 43, Will Loder, started 44th. He was up to 29th. And uh, number 73, Mark Perslow, started 38th. He was up to 27th. So uh, good runs from those guys. Here's Maria now. And uh, she has moved into second place. So Maria Costello caught Jamie Coward, but there's only a fifth of a second in it. Uh, so John McGuinness, Glenn Helen at lap two. He leads at number 10, Maria Costello, by 46 seconds. And in third place, number three, Jamie Coward. He is just a fifth of a second down on Maria Costello. And uh, that battle with uh, Jamie Coward, Maria, Chris Swallow and Lee Johnson, there was only about seven seconds between them four at the uh, grandstand. So let's have a little look-see as the next fight comes up into the left-hander. That is number 13, Lee Johnston. And uh, he is now fourth place. But uh, we need Chris Swallow through first before we can confirm that. But uh, the gap between Jamie Coward and Lee Johnston, eight seconds. And it was five seconds at the grandstand. No, seven seconds. So it's looking about right. Seven seconds between Johnston and Coward at the grandstand, but uh, Chris Swallow will have to come in between them, number 16. Uh, he should be the next man to arrive. A machine does now come into view. The sunlight glinting up the fair as he comes out of the trees. That is number 16, Chris Swallow. And Lee Johnston has gone ahead of Chris Swallow now. Uh, so it is McGuinness leads Costello by 46 seconds. Jamie Coward third, just a fifth of a second down on Maria Costello. In fourth place, number 13, Lee Johnston. He is eight seconds down on Jamie Coward. And in fifth place, number 16, Chris Swallow. He is three seconds back on Lee Johnston. Uh, the next man on the road should be number 14, James Hillier. But there was a little bit of a gap there. Didn't Joey Thompson went into the pits for some fuel. And uh, that meant that... Uh, we should see uh, climbing up the leaderboard a little bit. Pete Boast, uh, Richard Wilson, Danny Webb, uh, Chris McGarn as well will be in the mix. And uh, probably, uh, I think, Steve Ferguson, Phil McGurk and Mark Parrott will all move up places after Joey Thompson's stop. 14 comes through now. That is James Hillier. Uh, James Hillier will hold on to sixth place at the moment. But again, number 19, Michael Russell, was ahead of Hillier at the grandstand. And if uh, Russell should be here any time this soon, we have two machines out of Glen Helen 2. The first of those is number 19. Second is number 7, Joey Thompson. Jo Joey Thompson well back on corrected time, but he has stopped for fuel. So uh, Michael Russell does go into sixth place. Uh, so he is 40 seconds down on fifth place, Chris Swallow. And he is ahead of seventh place, number 14, James Hillier, by 32 seconds. Big gap for Joey Thompson, and I'm sure others will drop into that gap as they do. Danny Webb comes in now in eighth place. So Danny Webb, uh, 11 seconds down on seventh place, James Hillier. Uh, but I think number 35, Chris McGarn, will be the one to watch. He was ahead of Webb at the grandstand. And if we've got enough time to get him through, we'll do what we can. And uh, Danny Webb is uh, safely through here, but uh, he said eighth place. That's under threat from Chris McGarn. And the next machine does come out of Glen Helen 2. A little bit steadier on the approach down the box. 
tips that in onto the power. It is Chris McGarn. He does take eighth place. He is just two seconds down on seventh place. James Hillier as well. So Chris McGarn could well steal another place there. Indeed, he is nine seconds clear of ninth place. Danny Webb. So, uh, McGuinness leads Costello by 46 seconds. Coward is third. Lee Johnston, fourth. Eight seconds down on Coward. Fifth place, number 16, Chris Swallow. He's three down on Lee Johnston. In sixth place, number 19, Michael Russell. 40 seconds back on Chris Swallow. In seventh, number 14, James Hillier. He is 32 seconds down on Russell. Eighth, number 35, Chris McGarn. He's two seconds down on Hillier. In ninth place, number 17, Danny Webb. He is nine seconds back on Chris McGarn. Back to you at the grandstand. There's only one place to be in June, the Isle of Man TT Races. If you're enjoying TT 2018, do it all again in 2019 with IOM TT Travel. Sailings are available to book now and there's a huge choice of campsites, glamping options and hotels. Our expert travel advisors will be happy to help you plan the perfect TT 2019. See IOMTT.com for more details or even better, call into the travel shop at the rear of the grandstand and book today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Times are noticeably slower in the sector from Glen Helen to Balaf Bridge and Maria Costello's lost more time than the others because uh, Jamie Coward, 54.7 seconds down on McGuinness, but Maria's third, four seconds down on Coward, only one and a half ahead of Johnson. Let's go to Ramsey, Roy Moore. Yes, Giuseppe Patoni's uh, creation is in the Ramsey area. We're just looking down. We've found a little gap now where we can just see a glimpse of the rider as they go through. And it is John McGuinness who's broken the beam down there, holding on to 54 second advantage at uh, at Palap uh, Bridge. But here at Ramsey, just listen to him go through. <laughs> that the, possibly the conditions are just about right with that breeze taking the insects away because normally, and it's had to go back a couple of years, John McGuinness would raise his left hand off and take one of the, the rip-off visors and uh, get ready for the trip over the mountain and that would be during TT week when he last competed round here, certainly or was at last Grand Prix that he was there but certainly been out for a while but certainly increasing his lead it was 54 seconds there at Balaf Bridge, and he is the only rider so far through Ramsey Hairpin. We're expecting number three, Jamie Coward, shortly, but certainly 54 seconds down, but he's got that battle on with number 10, Maria Costello. Slipped back a bit on the run to Ramsey, but Lee Johnston appears to be the man on the move because he's only one and a half seconds now down on Maria Costello at Balaf Bridge, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. At Balaf Bridge, it was in fifth place, number 16, Chris Swallow, 10 seconds down on Lee Johnson, but uh, is Maria Costello slipping back a little bit? Certainly losing a few seconds here and there, but we'll be updating it shortly because number three, Jamie Coward, on the single cylinder, Craven Manx Norton is at Ramsey. Throttle back. The clutch a little bit to get it back onto the pipe and away he goes although in the old days with the megaphones it had to be done now with the silencing they put on them to get better performance out certainly 59 seconds is the gap so a further five seconds pulled out on the run from Balaf Bridge to Ramsey Hairpin by the race leader John McGuinness but they will have to stop for fuel will the single cylinder get four laps in it it could be interesting to see and certainly it might be an indication the fact that Joey Thompson stopped on a 500 single cylinder that he had to take fuel on that they didn't have it but it could be just the size of the tank uh, remains to be seen but certainly there'll be a bit of interest there we're expecting Maria Costello next now to see what the difference between her and Jamie Coward is the difference between John McGuinness number one and Jamie Coward increasing out now to nearly a minute 50 59.175 and we hear a pattern in the Ramsey area and will be coming towards us very very shortly indeed and it is Maria Costello who's dropped a further couple of seconds on the run from the lap bridge here to Ramsey on Jamie Coward but listen to her listen to her through Ramsey Sir 
certainly gets it on the power a lot quicker and uh, certainly going up through the box there on the quick shifter gets it through up towards the waterworks so Maria Costello holding on to that third place at the moment but there was only one and a half seconds in it between her and number 13 Lee Johnson I can tell you that Lee Johnson is now into third place number 13 here he is at Ramsey as well we're going to celebrate uh, later on as he gets that one on the pipe, the lap of Mike Halewood, and it always takes you back to 1967 on the big four-cylinder Honda with that battle with Giacomo Agostini, but certainly Lee Johnson, number 13, now in third place. He's only six seconds down on Jamie Coward, so again, that will create the interest as to one has got to stop for fuel, the other definitely will have to, and certainly I would think Maria Costello, who's half a second down on Lee Johnson, but holding on to a 10 second advantage off in fifth place and he's here with us now number 16 Chris Swallow beautiful beautiful no to that Royal Enfield we did notice in the paddock when uh, the bikes were stationary as they were for most of practice week with the weather that was on that there was a distinct difference between the two Royal Enfields so I'm suppose he will have passed his dad now on the uh, well certainly Ollie Linsdale on the other Royal Enfield somewhere but he'd be encouraging him 10 seconds is the difference between in fourth in fifth place number 16 Chris Swallow 10 seconds down on in fourth place Maria Costello that battle of only half a second though between her and Lee Johnson certainly one to look out for again through Balaf Bridge we find that uh, Chris Swallow was holding on to that fifth place no change there Michael Russell had dropped another couple of seconds down he was down to 41 seconds behind Chris Russell but holding on to a top six position and a comfortable 38 seconds ahead off in seventh place number 14 James Hillier another machine into Ramsey now and certainly that is the case and we'll be bursting into view shortly just throttles it back through white gates the posts are taken out from normal road use and into our side he comes and it is number 14 it is James Hillier is here at Ramsey and then number 19 behind him that's Michael Russell so where does he slot into he's holding on to that sixth place 47 seconds down on Chris Swallow but 44 seconds ahead of number 14 James Hillier in seventh and then Joey Thompson a minute and 20 seconds down on James Ilya but that could all change at the pit stops so that is the top eight here from Ramsey Hairpin it's John McGuinness by nearly a minute back to the grandstand book now for TT 2019 with IOM TT Travel an official travel partner of the TT races with the biggest range of accommodation options there's something for everyone from superb campsites with great atmosphere to classy glamping and top of the range hotels IOM TT Travel will make planning for TT 2019 a pleasure you can also book coach tours around the TT course, motorcycle hire and tickets for events and activities. Visit IOMTT.com or pop into the travel shop at the rear of the main grandstand today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? The elastic that is this race is really getting stretched out now at Ramsey Hairpin. Only 10 bikes have uh, got there on this second lap and just three have made it to the bungalow. But I can tell you the light is on for number one at Cronk Nimona. That is John McGuinness. And almost simultaneously, number 10, Maria Costello, made it up to the bungalow. So uh, it really is getting strung out, this uh, Bennett's senior classic TT but uh, at uh, the bungalow Maria Costello's just uh, got back at Jamie Coward a little bit uh, but Lee Johnston is still in second uh, third place he's just got to the bungalow Maria Costello is 1.6 seconds down in fourth place so it is McGuinness by one minute and six seconds. He's 2.6. Uh, then the coward is ahead of Lee Johnston in third and 1.6 back to Maria Costello. But let's uh, wait now for uh, John McGuinness. He'll be coming out of Governors and uh, onto Glen Crutchy Road. He'll be into our view very shortly. Who's going to have to pit? Who isn't? That's going to be the story of this race, you'd think. But... Uh, there's McGuinness and he's straight through. Let's 
let's have a look uh, 110.68 miles per hour for John McGuinness not shabby in any form whatsoever 20 minutes 27.254 uh, seconds 110.676 miles per hour light on for number three Jamie Coward now at Cronk Nimona and the gap at Cronk Nimona between our leader John McGuinness and second place Coward 1 minute 10.278 seconds it's going out and out and out with every sector and every transponder point around the mountain course but Jamie Coward is there now at Cronk Nimona we'll uh, keep an eye on the light for number 10 Maria Costello arriving and of course 13 now in that third place Lee Johnston looking up Glen Crutchley Road as uh, we await uh, Jamie Coward to make his way uh, past the nook and uh, down into the uh, Governor's Bridge, Governor's Dip and out onto Glen Crutchley Road which uh, should have done just about now still number 10 Maria Costello not yet indicated at Cronk Nimona but we are about to see Jamie Coward make it here to the grandstand we can hear him, we can now see him. Here he is. And we just look at the screens, 107.791 miles per hour for Jamie Coward. That is uh, 20, I can tell you number 10, the light is on now for Maria Costello at Cronk Nimona. 107.791 miles per hour that is 21 minutes almost exactly for Jamie Coward Cronk Nimona, Maria Costello 4 seconds is the margin that she is down on Jamie Coward who is in second we've got a factor in number 13 Lee Johnston there and uh, is he going to need to uh, come into the pits? And Lee Johnston is two and a half seconds ahead of Maria Costello at Cronk Nimona and in third position. And he's 1.4 seconds down on Jamie Coward. So Lee Johnston definitely on lap two is the man on the move uh, up the order. But let's see Maria Costello on that beautifully Swiss prepared uh, pattern uh, come through here at the grandstand start to hear the noise of the uh, pattern oh there's a bit of a misfire by the sound of it there it's gone she's trying to get it going it's chimed in we're just hearing but uh, yeah a bit of a major misfire as she came across the line here for Maria Costello but she seems to have uh, got the uh, bike going again 107.422 and this should be Lee Johnston across the line now and is that sounding a little bit hoarse as well we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on Lee's as well but he's put in a good lap there 108.189 that's propelled him into third place He's 2.3 seconds down on second place, number three, Jamie Coward. And Maria is 3.8 seconds down in fourth on our man in third, number 13, Lee Johnston. Should see uh, Chris Swallow next across the line here at the grandstand. And uh, he's uh, been in a, a fifth place, solid fifth place. Here he is. coming out there just indicating something to his pit crew I think uh, on the uh, Lindsay Lenfield there 106.884 miles per hour 21 minutes 10.795 seconds to number 16 Chris Swallow 9.3 he is down on fourth place Maria Costello so just the five uh, bikes have uh, gone past here at uh, the grandstand let's uh, catch up with a couple of retirements and uh, Kevin Miller number 77 retired at the Hawthorne Inn Steve Ferguson number 27 retired at the Oak Tree at Braddon Bridge uh, Mick Morton has uh, number 42 retired at Hanley's Corner and number 73 Mark Perslow at Crosby Hotel just five bikes here past us at the grandstand and it's time to go to Glen Helen Dave Christian 
Yes, uh, thanks, Tim. Just hear engine noise now. There's a bit of uh, a bit of rest, uh, a bit of a stir of the spectators down on the bank in front of us. Uh, machine into the corner to the left hander. It's John McGuinness. No problems for him. Sweet as a nut. And John McGuinness safely through here on his third lap with a commanding lead. Uh, a minute and 11 seconds it was at the grandstand. And uh, we'll await the arrival of uh, Jamie Coward just to see what that is here now on uh, lap three. Um, movers and shakers, uh, Glen Helen lap two. Uh, Richard Wilson, we mentioned uh, earlier on, number 41, uh, started in 28th place. He was up to 10th here at uh, Glen Helen on lap two. An 18th place gain there for Rich Wilson. Uh, number 47, Josh Daly, started 34th. He was up to 19th, just inside the top 20. And uh, number 40, Keith Clark, 10 place gain for him, started 32nd and was in 22nd place. Uh, number 43, Will Loder, he was in uh, 23rd, I think, and started at 44th place, so 20 uh, odd place gain for him. Uh, newcomer David Tetley, uh, number 79, uh, 20 place gain for him, started 47th place, up to 27th at uh, Glen Helen on lap two. And the veteran Arthur Browning, a 15 place gain for Arthur, started 46th. He was up to 31st place. And uh, number 29, Dave Matravers, a uh, 10 place gain for him, started 26th up to 16th. And so uh, there is plenty of racing in the middle order, although, you know, John McGuinness is well out in front uh, with what is a pretty commanding lead on lap three of this four lap race. But uh, keep your eye out down the order. There's plenty of guys doing good stuff. There is Jamie Coward now safely through here seven seconds john mcginnis has taken out of him one minute and 11 the gap was at uh, the grandstand it's now up to one minute and 18 seconds uh, so john mcginnis a very very healthy lead now will have to start thinking i think about machine conservation uh, one minute and 18 seconds his advantage uh, speed trap times from lap two, 141 for John McGuinness. He was 142.2 on lap one, 141 lap two. Uh, Maria Costello, around about the same. She was 141.3 on lap one, 140.7 on lap two. And uh, again, Lee Johnston, uh, he was 137 on lap one, 137 on lap two. So he is going really, really consistently uh, Jamie Coward at 134, he was on the first lap, 133.4 on lap two. And uh, behind him, Joey Thompson with a 132.9 and uh, Chris McGann, 131.8. So in that straight line, Solby Strait, between uh, Chris McGann and John McGuinness, 10 miles an hour in a straight line. And uh, that will give, uh, well, it shows you why John McGuinness is so far ahead in this race. Uh, we're still awaiting the arrival of Maria Costello, and it didn't sound good when it went through the grandstand. We reckon there was a 70-second starting difference, and I think that 70 seconds has elapsed. So uh, she appears to be overdue, although we do hear some engine noise now. It is, yeah. It is a bike streaks out of Glen Helen 2. Bright sunshine. Can't quite make it out. It is Maria Costello, so still going but uh, losing time and uh, Lee Johnston catching her on the road he's going to get a good look at uh, Maria going down Kronkavadi and uh, Lee Johnson now third place he is just one second down on second place Jamie Coward that was two at the grandstand so Lee Johnston now really pushing it and uh, Maria Costello now into fourth place. She's 25 seconds down on Lee Johnston. And I suspect when Chris Swallow, number 16, gets here, he may just nip ahead of her. So uh, whatever that problem is for Maria, it is starting to cost her time. Uh, Glenn Helen on lap two, she was second place. She's currently fourth, but only four bikes through. And uh, when number 16, Chris Swallow, gets here, he will probably go ahead of her, I would think, on corrected time. Uh, we've got some engine noise up the valley now. Machine out of Glen Helen 2. Flick to the right. Down a gear into the left hand. And that is number 16, Chris Swallow. And he does go ahead of Maria Costello. So Chris Swallow now up to fourth. Number 16, Chris Swallow, fourth place. He's 21 seconds down on third place, Lee Johnston. And Maria Costello, fifth place. She is five seconds down on Chris Swallow. 
Uh, she should be safe because behind Chris Swallow at the grandstand was Michael Russell and there was a minute difference between Swallow and Russell. So I think Maria's fifth place is safe for the time being. But if that problem persists, uh, we could see Michael Russell start to move up a little bit on a uh, Russell number 19. Uh, shouldn't be a million miles away now. But uh, not quite made it this far yet. And uh, just seeing through the grandstand, yeah, Swallow was fifth, Michael Russell sixth, uh, James Hillier seventh, Danny Webb eighth, Chris McGann ninth, and Richard Wilson number 41 uh, in tenth place. That was consistent for him on that lap. He was tenth with us here at Glen Helen, uh, which is a great race for him. Made 18 places, started in 28th place. I see Dave Madsen Migdal just through the grandstand now as well, number 26, a uh, veteran local rider and uh, with an incredible number of TT finishes. And uh, Dave Madsen Migdal uh, still circulating well, 18th place at the grandstand at the end of lap two. But uh, it is John McGuinness out in front, one minute and 18 seconds his advantage. Glenn Helen on lap three with uh, Jamie Coward in second place, but uh, under threat, number 13, Lee Johnston. Uh, he is just a second behind Jamie Coward on adjusted time and uh, could well catch him. Here is the next man into the left-hander. That is number 19, Michael Russell. Uh, a minute and eight seconds down. He is down on Maria Costello, so sixth place for Michael Russell, number 19, but a minute and eight seconds down on fifth place, Maria Costello. McGuinness leads Glen Helen lap three, one minute and 18 from Jamie Coward. Lee Johnson third, just a second back. Back to you at the grandstand. There's only one place to be in June, the Isle of Man TT races. If you're enjoying TT 2018, do it all again in 2019 with IOM TT Travel. Sailings are available to book now and there's a huge choice of campsites, glamping options and hotels. Our expert travel advisors will be happy to help you plan the perfect TT 2019. See IOMTT.com for more details, or even better, call into the travel shop at the rear of the grandstand and book today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Two more retirements. Number 36, Alec Whitwell, retired at Kate's Cottage. And number 74, Russell Robry at Greber Bridge. At Belaf Bridge, uh, Lee Johnston is into second place ahead of Jamie Coward. Number 13, Lee Johnston's ahead of Coward into second. Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy Moore. Yeah, just interesting to see Michael Rutter go through. So he'd stopped before Ramsey, and uh, certainly it sounded well, but I suppose it's kind of a needs must because he'll have to get back for the second race. And certainly Michael Rutter on the uh, machine th safely through Ramsey. But the man we're looking for is John McGuinness, lap number three, Ramsey Hairpin, and he's here. One, two, just a puff of smoke from the pattern as it grunts, throttles back and then tight to the inside. And certainly lost one of his style. Bang on cue, right at the last Bennett sign on the exit from uh, Ramsey Hairpin. A few insects coming out to play because up went the left hand up to his uh, helmet and took one of the uh, rip-offs off. So John McGuinness back to normal on the TT course and certainly the speed that he's going at, concentration level right in there. I suppose it will be all mechanical now, but certainly that thing that we mentioned before, yeah, it did sound well that uh, Michael Rutter reminds me of the time that sometimes when uh, riders in the old days, when there weren't as, weren't as many marshals about and stuff like that, many of the stories that were related about machines stopping and then saying it wanted something that was holding on, something loose. In fact, in, I think, the book uh, TT to Tokyo, Tommy Robb talks about, uh, I think it was the Yamaha or something like that, conking out somewhere, and he didn't have any spare plugs, and I think he borrowed one from a, a tractor or another motorbike somewhere that was parked around the TT course and managed to get the machine back to the grandstand. And certainly it's uh, interesting things like that. Every time we look at these, we wonder, Bob Heath, he was the star man on the single cylinder machines and Fred Wormsley prepared as well, just like Michael Rutter's is. And certainly he uh, think, bought one of uh, Mike Halewood's Hondas a few years back. I think it was the one that he ran at number 10. 
and certainly uh, revived it and got it fired up again. I don't think there was any innards in it. And I suppose it's surprising that we're not seeing that going round. So Bob Heath, one of the star men. Let's see who's second now. It's Jamie Coward who should be here with us now. And it is. Is it four laps for him? And this could make the difference between him and Lee Johnston. just there blows the exhaust out and uh, John McGuinness is uh, kind of rip off five and visor now they're prominently on the right hand side of the road looking of no kind of danger to anybody but certainly that is the case as the exhaust done at one minute 28 seconds he's down 28 seconds yeah another six seconds pulled out on the run by John McGuinness uh, from Burlap Bridge to Ramsey Hairpin over Jamie Coward but we've got to look out to see what the difference will be between number three Jamie Coward and number 13 Lee Johnston I don't feel as though they're going to get four laps out of it so this could be advantage Coward lap number three as they go through but uh, we've quoted on that many, many times before and been totally wrong, so don't take my word from it here from Ramsey, but it is still part of history of the TT mountain course that uh, fuel has played a very important, and the number of ones who have stopped through lack of fuel in and around the Hillbury area, well, they're pretty uh, prominent as well. Going through the lap bridge, it was Lee Johnson, 1 minute and 22 seconds down on John McGuinness, but uh, Jamie Coward was third, but he was only 1 and a half seconds down on Lee Johnson. In fourth was 16 Chris Swallow, 26 seconds down on Jamie Coward, so Lee Johnson, I think, is here with us at Ramsey. It sounds as though he is. The four-cylinder Honda is at Ramsey. One minute and 25 down on John McGuinness, but only two seconds ahead of Jamie Coward. And he's trying. Davies Motorsport Machine there is away from Ramsey Hairpin, as I say, one minute and 25 seconds down on John McGuinness, but uh, holding only a 2.3 second advantage over in third place, number three, Jamie Coward. I think Maria Costello has probably dropped out of the equation now. She was 18 seconds down on Chris Swallow at Balaf Bridge, who in turn was 26 seconds down on Jamie Coward, but I think the pattern is still going because we can hear one now in the Ramsey area, number 10, Maria Costello, but the gap is out to one minute and nine seconds down on Jamie Coward now here at Ramsey. Certainly, I would think it's a gearbox problem that Maria Costello has got because she was certain, and then you just hear the selection going away from Ramsey Hairpin, certainly in a higher gear than she required to get round Ramsey. Now here's Chris Swallow. Down through the box, he's 29 seconds down on Jamie Coward in uh, third, who's holding on to third, so that battle between Lee Johnson and Jamie Coward is going to go right down to the wire. It's now in fourth place, number 16, Chris Swallow, 29 seconds down on Jamie Coward, and making in the top five here at Ramsey, but I... I feel as though with gearbox problems is number 10 Maria Costello who is now 40 seconds down on Chris Swallow so can Michael Russell who was 58 seconds down on Maria at Balaf Bridge make any inroads into it he's not expecting him number 19 Michael Russell as yet but he was holding on to 6th there I'm pretty confident he probably will hold on to 6th at Ramsey Hairpin if he makes it here because he had a 1 minute and 9 second advantage over in 7th place number 17 Danny Webb and certainly it'll be interesting to see what the time difference is here at Ramsey between 19 Michael Russell and 10 Maria Costello as they head up for the final and fourth lap but that is the current position a battle on between Lee Johnson and Jamie Coward with only 2.3 seconds in it currently fourth number 16 Chris Swallow 29 seconds down on Jamie Coward within fifth number 10 Maria Costello 40 seconds down on Chris Swallow back to the grandstand Wherever you live in the world, IOM TT Travel can book everything for the perfect trip to the TT or Classic TT races, and all it takes is a deposit to secure. You can choose from the biggest range of campsites, glamping, and hotels at IOMTT.com, and we have great inclusive packages for all budgets. Check us out at the travel shop at the rear of the main grandstand, speak to our expert travel advisors today, and you could walk away with TT 2019 all sorted. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Radio TT. 
There's only five bikes gone through the hairpin, two at the bungalow, but importantly, one now at Cronk Nimona. It is John McGuinness. The light is on for number one. Uh, John McGuinness' uh, lead over Jamie Coward at the bungalow was uh, 1 minute and 34 seconds. But, of course, we uh, await Lee Johnston to make it up to the bungalow. But, uh, yes, evidence something was uh, fundamentally wrong with uh, Maria Costello's partner. She went past at the end of lap two, and gearing would seem to be the issue uh, there. But Lee Johnston's uh, getting a little more comfortable in second place at the bungalow. One minute, 27 and a half seconds. Uh, a 6.6 second advantage over Jamie Coward, who's in third. But uh, this is going to be McGuinness coming through now. And it is John McGuinness coming into the pits. So let's go down straight away to Chris Kinley. Well, it was 1 minute 27 he had over Lee Johnson at the bungalow. He's gone through Conk and Obviously, he's gone here now across the line. And John Well, 210 mile an hour laps have put him in good contention for the win of this race at the Conk Nimona. We'll keep a little eye on the split for that. But Lee Johnson's definitely been the man in the move to just dragging the bike up onto the little remote start that they have there. Just a big glug of fluid. And don't forget, these are the first racing laps he's done for, what, two and a bit years on the the man he's obviously done that parade at the TT but this is just a, a little bit different you heard Chris Palmer saying in practice during the week these things are so so hard to race on there you go she fires oh hello a little bit of time just lost there now just, oh, just have a reset on that one just pull it back up again a number 61 in retirement Tony Ainley in retirement but John McGuinness is away what's that speed limiter at the bottom yeah that's nice and steady and there we go John McGuinness is away nobody else at Cronk Nimona as of yet We'll get that pit stop time for John in a couple of moments' time. It was there, well, 48.3 seconds that he did that pit stop in. And we'll have a little look and see if anybody else at Cronk the Mona. Yes, there is. Jamie Coward's there, and it's 137 back, 137.44. And John McGuinness's lap was 110 again, 0.62. That is so consistent, Tim, isn't it, those three laps? Certainly is. Uh, yeah, very, very consistent indeed. Just a little bit of a hiccup as he was uh, leaving, but uh, 48.3 seconds uh, is the quickest pit stop we've seen. Chris McGarn, number 35, was in earlier at 57.3 uh, as we, of course, wait for Jane, Jamie Coward uh, to emerge. Uh, 1 minute 37.4 down at Cronk Nimona, but he should be on to Glen Crutchy Road now. And is he coming in or is he going straight through? We'll wait and see. Should be coming into view very, very shortly indeed. Here he is. Straight through then for Jamie Coward. And, uh, yep, 1 minute 34 is the advantage that uh, at the grandstand. But that, of course, is without uh, the pit stop, 134 exactly. So just uh, come back a little bit. But, of course, John McGuinness was slowing down uh, coming into the grandstand, uh, into the pit lane. So that probably explains that one. But uh, it is still Lee Johnston who is in third, second place at Cronk Nimona. And uh, 6.9 is the advantage that uh, Lee Johnston has over number three, uh, Jamie Coward. So it was uh, 48.333 seconds for McGuinness in the pits. Uh, Chris McGarn, 35, was 57.348 seconds. Number 23, Peter Boast, 58.230. And Josh Daly was in as well. Number 47, 59.160. And uh, as Tim and Chris got exactly almost to the second, uh, Joey Thompson earlier, number seven, was just over the minute. One minute, point, uh, 0 0.8 seconds. And uh, Hillier and Stockdale, the only others to have pitted. But let's see where uh, Lee Johnston fits in here at the grandstand. Is he also going straight through? No, there's the klaxon. So this should be Lee Johnston, and it's going to be a little top of a gasoline as he uh, just slows the bike down, comes into, of course, the uh, restricted area, 60 kilometres an hour, no faster than that, and he is still in second, but only just. Let's go down to Chris. Yeah, it was 6.6 .6 of the bungalow we had over Jamie Coward back at Cronk Nimona. It was, uh, well, 6.9, but he's going to lose that now on the pit stop, isn't he? So he was 1 minute and 30 down at Cronk Nimona on John McGuinness, but through the start and finish, 132 was the gap. And only Jamie Coward, 1.24. You can just hear a little whining noise in the background. 
and that is just a fan that they've got just trying to get the cool air into the Honda to the engine there to the Davies Motorsport bike but we've got to keep an eye on this because this is going to promote Jamie Coward back up the second place Jamie did 108.91 108.601 and Lee Johnson 108.913 hopefully she's going to fire up not lose too much time there she goes nice and easy fires the Honda up onto the cylinders and away she goes fantastic we'll get that pit stop speed uh, t- time should I say from uh, Tim O'Hanlon in a second and we don't I think anybody else at crunk the moment there, there we go somebody else going that'll be uh, Chris Swallow through so Chris will jump up a little bit as well after those pit stops so it will all change when they get to Dave Christian there at uh, Glen Helen a little bit John McGuinness won't be too far away from there now what did Lee Johnson do on the pit Tim? it was 48.9 which was 0.6 slower than McGuinness so with Coward going straight through and with John McGuinness slowing down, John would still have around right about 40 to 45 second lead at uh, Glen Helen. Thank you very much for that. As Maria Costello was in, Tim, I'm just going to keep hold of this a minute just to see what she's having a little look at around the back because it did sound like gearbox to me as well. She went by as if she kind of just hit a couple of false neutrals, a little bit of a shake of the head, but looks like shaking the head once again. So let's see. They're just having a little bit of a just there. They are putting the fuel in. Maria confirmed it in the moment in around about fifth place, but that could all change with this pit stop. If she's going to continue on, this could be massive disappointment to happen right in front of us here at the start and finish line. It looks like she's going to continue on. So the off flashing the fuel into the machine and a shake of the head by the guy on the goggles and the with the with the fireproof mask on there so the little cap goes on gets turned whether it's routine or not if she's going to continue it doesn't look like it to me no it's not no it's not going to be it gets a big hug from the fuel team so it looks like maria is going to be out unfortunately dave christian glenn helen yes uh, thanks chris uh, just awaiting the arrival of the first bike on the road here it is right now down a gear, knee out, absolutely inch perfect as always, John McGuinness and uh, we await the uh, clock to tick away now to see just what sort of advantage he carries into this last lap, uh, 48 seconds for the pit stop, had a little bit for starting up, slowing down, I think probably somewhere in the region 40-45 seconds might be his lead. Uh, over uh, number three, Jamie Coward, with Lee Johnson having uh, stopped in the pits. And, uh, well, a very big disappointment for Maria Costello. And we were looking back at lap three at the speed trap times, and uh, she was well down. It was her slowest pass through the speed trap, 124 miles an hour. And on lap one, she was at 141, so there clearly was something wrong with the pattern. Uh, John McGuinness, interestingly enough, was his fastest pass through the speed trap, 141.9. And here was me sitting here talking about machine conservation. Uh, Jamie Coward, 132.9. Lee Johnson, his best time as well, 138.4. So he had a push on as the next machine comes out of Glen Helen 2. Down a gear into the left-hander. That is uh, number three, Jamie Coward, 47.9 seconds. We call that 48. I wasn't too far out. 48 seconds, John McGuinness's lead now on uh, the last lap of this uh, Bennett Senior Classic TT. And, uh, well, 48 seconds... Uh, if John has a problem, Jamie Coward is going to be right there to pick up the uh, the bits afterwards and uh, might just sneak in. But uh, at the moment, uh, it's difficult to see anybody getting past John McGuinness. Um, Lee Johnson should be the next man on the road. But uh, remember, he did stop in the pits uh, for a little bit of a splash and dash at the end of that lap. And uh, might be a minute or so before he gets here. Um, the guys we were watching a bit lower down the order, Richard Wilson, number 41, remember he started 28th place, 20, get a 20 place gain for him, Glenn Helen on lap 3, he was up to 8th place, that's an excellent ride for Richard Wilson, uh, Dave Matravers started 26th, he was up to 15, uh, 15th here at Glen Helen, that's an 11 place gain, Josh Daly, 34th. He was up to 22nd. That's number 47, Josh Daly. Uh, the newcomer, David Tetley, started 47th and uh, up to 26th place. So a great afternoon for uh, David Tetley on his first outing here on the Earl of Man uh, TT course. Uh, Keith Clark, 32nd. He started up to 23rd. So a nine place gain for Keith Clark. Uh, Will Loader, another 20-place gain, started in 44th. That's number 43, Will Loader. 
just outside the top 20, 21st place at Glen Helen on lap three. Uh, Leon Murphy, another one to catch the eye, a big move for him. Number 69, Leon Murphy, uh, 37th position he started and uh, up to 24th at Glen Helen. And the other one I picked up was Arthur Browning, uh, Arthur the veteran, uh, 46th place Arthur started and uh, number 54, he's right in up to 28th place at Glen Helen on lap three. But uh, John McGuinness will be well on the way towards the left now, I would think. And uh, well, 48 seconds his lead here over Jamie Coward. And uh, it would look like uh, Lee Johnston uh, will be slotting into third place potentially. But uh, Chris Swallow not too far away from Lee Johnson, I wouldn't have thought, on uh, adjusted time. And uh, Chris Swallow may just sneak in there on a podium yet. Uh, just keep an eye out on that. Uh, Chris Swallow been having a nice steady ride. <laughs> There is Lee Johnston now, third place confirmed, 51 seconds he is behind Jamie Coward. Uh, 51 seconds the gap between second and third, but uh, like I said, Chris Swallow will be the man to watch. Here he is, Chris Swallow now. Just sneaking around under the radar indeed, Chris Swallow takes third place. So uh, your top three at Glen Helen on lap, on lap four, it's John McGuinness leads Jamie Coward and number 16 Chris Swallow up to third place. Nice steady ride from Chris Swallow this afternoon, under the radar for everybody and just sneaking in on that last lap potentially to grab a podium. But uh, Lee Johnston uh, in fourth place, he is only 14 seconds behind Chris Swallow and that is uh, definitely achievable. Uh, now uh, Lee's got the uh, Honda fueled and uh, ready to go. Uh, Michael Russell will get promoted with Maria Costello's sad retirement. Uh, Michael Russell, number 19, he was in sixth place at the grandstand, but uh, he's going to leapfrog up, and uh, Danny Webb, James Hillier, Richard Wilson, all going to gain places now Maria's retired. But uh, we await the arrival of the next man on the road, and uh, what we're looking for now, probably Michael Russell, I would think. Uh, but uh, difficult to know now who did or didn't go into uh, the pits for fuel with that huge gap at the front end of the race where John McGuinness and uh, Jamie Coward uh, just pushing ahead of uh, everyone else. And uh, as you can see, there's a very big gap now between uh, fourth place Lee Johnston and uh, the rest of the field. Uh, Richard Wilson, uh, the man we were watching, ninth place uh, he was at the grandstand. That's uh, number 41. And uh, remember, Richard Wilson started 28th place, so uh, top 10 for him will be a fantastic result. And uh, he is uh, through the grandstand holding ninth place, but clearly that will be eighth because uh, Maria Costello has retired there at the grandstand at the end of lap three. Uh, your, fire, your tail of the tape then here at Glen Helen on the last lap, just four riders through, and we're going to have to move on pretty swiftly. But John McGuinness leads Jamie Coward by 48 seconds with number 16, Chris Swallow in third, 37 seconds back on Jamie Coward. Back to you at the grandstand. Book now for TT 2019 with IOM TT Travel, an official travel partner of the TT races. With the biggest range of accommodation options, there's something for everyone from superb campsites with great atmosphere to classy glamping and top of the range hotels. IOM TT Travel will make planning for TT 2019 a pleasure. You can also book coach tours around the TT course, motorcycle hire and tickets for events and activities. Visit IOMTT.com or pop into the travel shop at the rear of the main grandstand today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Just the two then at the lap bridge. Uh, McGuinness's lead 50.2 seconds over Coward. More retirements. Uh, Bob Owen is a retirement at Quarry Benz and Tony Ainley in the pits. I can tell you, Maria Costello got a huge round of applause when she retired and got off the bike here in pit lane from the grandstand. There was a little curtsy back and uh, a lot of hugs of the pit crew and uh, others as she unfortunately has had to retire here at the grandstand. But uh, let's go back to... Uh, the lap bridge, only the two still there, McGuinness and Coward, but the real battle is can Lee Johnson make up those 14.3 seconds uh, from fourth place to third, which is number 16, Chris Swallow. Lee Johnston is now also at the lap bridge. He's 51.1 seconds down on Coward. He's Swallow to get there. That's going to take too long. Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy Moore. 
Yes, general consensus of opinion at Ramsey is that uh, possibly Lee Johnson will leapfrog and get that position, but uh, certainly that remains to be seen. But we salute John McGuinness at Ramsey Airpin. Listen to him on the final lap of the Bennett Senior. <laughs> Bike sounding good, him as immaculate as ever, and certainly, well, it'll be the second pattern win in 2018 because Michael Dunlop did it in the lightweight in the TT not all that long ago, and certainly that will be through. We just didn't quite catch who went through there. We tried to get everybody through, but we didn't get a number for that particular rider who, one of the lower order riders who's gone through. The man tells me that it was number 68, and let's give reference to him, number 68, Tony Tuttle, on the Tuttle Racing 362 Honda. So that's one who was competing in the 500 class on a 362. So what is the position at Balaf Bridge on that battle between for third place, number 16, Chris Swallow and Lee Johnston? I can tell you that the gap is down to seven and a half seconds. Lee Johnson just seven and a half seconds down on currently in third place, Chris Swallow, Jamie Coward holding on to that second place by 43 seconds at Balaf and he's made Ramsey on the Craven Manx beautiful sound just on the overrun and gets the knee out and gets the uh, knee scraper going round on that particular bike and is safely through he's 50 seconds so virtually exactly the same it was at Balaf Bridge I would suggest that John McGuinness is cruising but then again, it's just got to be cruising at his pace. And certainly with the fuel on board, there's nothing else other now than uh, certainly that trip over the mountain. And Jamie Coward holding on to second place at the moment, number three, but 50 seconds now down on John McGuinness. But it's that battle between number 16, Chris Swallow, who we'll have to wait for for quite a while. He was 43 seconds down on Jamie Coward at Balaf, but that seven and a half second advantage that uh, Chris Swallow had over Lee Johnson, can the four-cylinder Davies Motorsport machine make that up on the run here too to Ramsey? And I would suggest that possibly the uh, the battle over the mountain would go to the four-cylinder machine uh, on the t in comparison to the single-cylinder machine of Chris Swallow. So all very good stuff indeed, and certainly that's the way things have been going. I do have noticed that uh, John McGuinness and Ian Hutchinson, all the complications they've had through injury, they were over at the Southern 100 in July there watching the racing down. I think they went down uh, to a particular photograph that showed them any of it was down through the Iron Gate section of the course and certainly regular visitors to the island. But what an absolute delight to see John McGuinness back in full flow round the mountain course. I suppose at the very, very low times of his injury, he wouldn't be thinking it would be possible but now what will be his thoughts as he sticks his head down behind the screen of the pattern with a comfortable lead on his return to the mountain course and knowing that there's not all that far to go he probably will be through the bungalow now I would suggest we'd be able to tell you whether he has made the mountain climb just by clicking on and certainly he's not as yet at the bungalow but certainly will be well on his way sweeping into the left right of the bungalow there's only the climb up then to Brandywell, the highest point on the circus, and then the circuit, and then it's all the course, and then it's all downhill from there. And certainly that will be the case. But what's this battle now between Lee Johnson and uh, Jamie Coward? It's yes, yeah, yes, it is. 13. Chris Swallow, not as yet at Ramsey Hairpin, but that's not a surprise. But uh, Lee Johnson. 51 seconds down on Jamie Coward, so that's a consolidation for Jamie Coward in second place. Lee Johnson now only three and a half seconds down, though. On the next machine interview will be the single cylinder machine of Chris Swallow, and you can hear it coming towards us here now. We can see it and drops it down through the box, immaculate style. Beautiful sounding by Chris Swallow, still holding on to third here at Ramsey, number 16. But Lee Johnston is only number 13, only 3.6 seconds down on Chris Swallow. So he's taken four seconds out on the run from Balaf Bridge here to Ramsey Hairpin. And as we suggested before, I would think, I would think 
that the climb up the mountain would favour the four-cylinder machine and that could be reversed by the time they get to the bungalow. I can tell you that John McGuinness, number one, is through the bungalow. Jamie Coward, not as yet expected there. So we go on to the circuit and we climb it up to Brandywell. We take it round the sweeping left to Brandywell and into his mind. And as the view comes in round Dukes, the 32nd, you can see Douglas stretching out before you and uh, knowing that you're on your way to it. A senior classic win Bennett's senior classic win here on the Isle of Man on your comeback Jamie Coward is up the mountain John McGuinness not hanging back picked a further 8 seconds on the climb up the mountain John McGuinness leads Jamie Coward by 58 seconds with only that part of the circuit to go down through Keppel Gate Kate's Cottage Greg Nabar down through Brandish Hilbury Cronk Namona and the chequered flag awaits John McGuinness in his comeback ride back to the grandstand there's only one place to be in June, the Isle of Man TT Races. If you're enjoying TT 2018, do it all again in 2019 with IOM TT Travel. Sailings are available to book now and there's a huge choice of campsites, glamping options and hotels. Our expert travel advisors will be happy to help you plan the perfect TT 2019. See IOMTT.com for more details or even better, call into the travel shop at the rear of the grandstand and book today. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Very old school here as we look across at the scoreboards waiting for the light to come on for number one, John McGuinness. He's safely through the bungalow. 58 seconds is the advantage that he had there. And the light is on for number one, John McGuinness. He's made it to Cronk Nimona. There's just the sort of 50 minutes or so uh, now for him to get here to the grandstand to get another win around the mountain course. He will be a very, very emotional man, I think, after the injuries that he's had and uh, lying on a golf course at the uh, result of that crash at the Northwest 200 and all the uh, spinal injuries he had the rib injuries that he had as uh, Michael Rutter comes into the pits and uh, uh, of course that leg injury and the time he's been in the frame as well and the time it's taken and the false start with the TT as well his hopes are up at the launch of the TT uh, but then uh, uh, further injury and he should be coming on to Glen Crutchy Road that chequered flag will be readied and uh, John McGuinness is uh, about to take a second Bennett Senior Classic TT on the Roger Winfield prepared pattern the chequered flag is out the master of the mountain is back John McGuinness a little wave a little fist pump as he goes through is a winner again on the Isle of Man. 23 TT wins, two classic TT wins as well. What a comeback from John McGuinness from that injury at the Northwest 200. Well, he's going to enjoy that uh, Mike Halewood lap. I'm sure that's due away at around quarter to four. There's a further uh, one lap practice session to come. What an ovation he is going to get coming up the return. Nobody, uh, just Jamie Coward signalled at Cronk Nimona. We don't want to miss this win for John McGuinness. An emotional victory, I'm sure it's going to be as well. So let's go straight down to Chris Kinley. What an ovation John McGuinness is about to get. Absolutely, Tim. And yet we're going to wait for him just to turn in this very famous return road. He's done so many times to get that little turn in, the alarming that tells him that he's won around the Alaman TT course once more. What was he thinking when he's lying on that golf course in the on the north coast of Northern Ireland a couple of years ago, lying upside down, as he put it, with his leg in bits, with his body in bits, and thinking, my God, am I ever going to race again? And this has proved a lot of people wrong. Here he is. we make of that folks around here he's back let him have this for a minute <laughs> yeah all the family here as well as mum's here his dad is here as well and well let the photographs be taken we'll let the guys get in 
And there's a little flag in the front of the of the motorbike as well, probably giving them to him, somebody down there. The team are in. Great pit stop, about 40, 47, 48 seconds in that in. Gets a big hug from all the team members. Well done, Ewan. Well done. Let him take his gloves off. Just nice and easy. Gloves are off. He's got the Monster Energy drink there as well, ready for John. Takes one glove off, the right glove off, then the left glove off. Second place is in. It's Jamie Coward. Well done to Jamie. And we'll let him take the, the showy lid off. And apologies if you're trying to talk back to me up there in the tower. Just can't hear you coming back to me. Just losing it a bit in here, but we'll sort that out for later. Let the young fella take the crash hat off him. Let him get the Monster Energy hat on. And how does that feel, young man? Uh, it feels amazing. I never, ever thought I'd ever be able to pull back into this winner's enclosure on this, this circuit after I was uh, laid on my backside in a field with me back in four pieces and ribs all broken, my legs snapped in half. Uh, but I've worked hard, uh, kept the faith in everything. All my sponsors and everybody's kept the faith in my family and everybody. And, uh, yeah, I just unbelievable feeling. It's really, really special. I mean... You know, I've had a rough old week with the weather. But the conditions were perfect. The weather was kind to us. I so enjoyed them four laps on this pattern. It never missed a beat. Uh, I was fumbling about in the pits again, my fault. But uh, <laughs> luckily, we were, we're fine enough. I just read the boards. And uh, just thank you so much to all the people out there giving me the support, waving me all the way around. You know, I'd love to, I always sort of want to get my hand out and give me a bit of a wave. But uh, I always think of a wave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down or something, tempting a bit of fate. But there was a, there was a woman in a wheelchair and a, and a chap coming out of... Uh, Union Mills waving, just waving so much, so thanks for that, guys. But uh, yeah, like I say, you know, last time I on the pattern two years ago, we won on this bike, so you know, I just read the boards and just I just so so enjoyed that race, it was just amazing. I thought, yeah, I felt like crying coming over the mountain. I was like, jeez, we'll just keep concentrating, hit all the apexes and get the thing to the finish. You know, I thought, I'm gonna win another race here, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but. Thanks to all the loyal people who've been with my friends and family and that, because I've, I've had a rough time, you know. But well, my sponsors and everybody have been uh, right there with me, and uh, it's an amazing feeling, I can't lie. <laughs> After the pit stop, kind of whoopsie, but you kind of knew you had a minute and a bit then. Lee was coming, but it was miles back. What were you thinking the last lap, dropping down Bray Hill and thinking, right, come on, 37 miles. Come on, did you give it a little stroke just thinking about it? Oh, yeah, I talked to the bike and everything. <laughs> I'm like, come on, come on, and... I got some weird rituals when I ride around as well. Every time I go through Crosby, I ask David Jeffers to look after me. Every time I go through Kurt Michael, I ask Gus Scott to look after me. I know it's a bit weird, but it's just something. No, I've, it's not. It's something I've. Your all, friends. Yeah, it's something I've always, always done. And uh, you know, after looking down, look at me on this last lap, and I didn't rev the bike over ten. I just short shifted it, short shifted it, and uh, we just just got to be careful. Mistake when you're doing that. You just got to try and keep keep the ball rolling, keep everything running along, and uh, I did, you know, and. Uh, yeah, like you say, I, I, I don't know what happened in the pit. <laughs> there was nobody to shut the cat when the fuel was in, so I was like, oh, you could have shut the cat, mate. But uh, we had a bit of a laugh at that, uh, and we got it going again. And uh, yeah, I, I'm about not used to these roller starts and stuff, but you know, from the drop of the flag, it, it was just, uh, I just never had any any problems anywhere. But uh, probably the best bike on the on the grid, I know. But uh, you know, we had to stop for fuel, and uh, you have got to hit all your marks, and you've got to bring them to the end. You know, there's no point to you can't over rev them. You got to. You know, bring them round, and uh, you know, but it, like I say, it was just a, just the perfect race. Nobody else was near. You were gone. You say you're on, on the best bike, but like I say, it's classic racing. They can stop between here and the top of the Indians, can't they? Well, the first three years of race, I didn't finish the race on the first lap. We had a, a few little issues, you know, silly little issues, not you know that that were out of our control. But uh, you know, when we got it all together in uh, 16, and you know, I tell you, I'm pretty tired. You know, it doesn't have to take it out. They're really, really small and they really clamp you in. And, you know, I've been back on barbecues and pies and all that lot. So I tell you, these leathers are a bit, fit me like a condom, to be fair, at the minute. So while I was trying to keep tucked in and keep my body all in under the screen, it, it was tough. It was tough work, you know. But, uh, yeah, just that, that bit of magic you, you have or that little bit of something that you, that, that you know that's inside you just came out of there. And, you know, I just just enjoyed every every minute of it I, I just, you know just I don't know what to say you know the that's missus a, that's a first I know the missus and the kids the kids are growing up and you know like you and drop the penny down my leathers that's the first time he's ever done it instead of the missus and you know we've got amazing mum and my dad are here actually nice to me as well so yeah proud moment you know
enjoy it. Thank you very much. Well Cheers, done, John. Guys. Well done, guys. Thank you very much for that. Cheers. Tim, just confirm uh, the distances between second and third for us. Yes, uh, Jamie Coward finished in second. He was 1 minute 13.072 seconds down on John McGuinness. And in third, Lee Johnston, 25 and a half seconds down on Coward, but three, nearly four seconds, uh, we'll call it, ahead of number 16, Chris Swallow, who is in fourth. There you go, Chris. Yeah, thanks very much for that. We'll just jump round the family. Sorry about that, Sal. OK, that's a word of Jamie if we can. Jamie, many congratulations. I mean, no pit stop. We all knew that. John was away, but still doing 108, 108 in the bits. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, that's, uh, I'm tough with that, you know, because obviously everyone knows that the uh, practice week's been terrible, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm tough. I just uh, got my head down and just uh, kept plodding along. Kept plodding along, kept reading the pit boards out there. I just like to say thanks to people out there. So I didn't have any pit boards, but you know, just, I didn't have any people out, but they just kept flashing them out at me, you know, so... Uh, yeah, thanks to them. But yeah, I just kept reading the boards and I knew that obviously John would be gone and then uh, I'd have a bit of a battle on with a few other people. But uh, I just kept the gap as close as I could and I knew the last pit, a lot of three of the, the pit and I could then get the gap increase, you know. So yeah, well, I'm chuffed, but I must say, I just, big thanks to Ted and John, you know, on the team. It's been uh, it's been a rough week, like, for practice and stuff, but it's nice just to come home now with a second place, you know. Track conditions and it's a bit blustery here. What was it like up on top? Yeah, it's uh, up on the top. The little single cylinder was struggling a little bit. You know, uh, when you slipped it into the top gear up the mountain mile, it would just want purring properly. You know, so uh, yeah, we'd, I'm I'm chuffed with that. It's uh, couldn't do any better than that. Really, I have to try and see if uh, convince Ted's retired now. Once all this business, so I'll see if I can convince him to buy a pattern. I think. <laughs> do you reckon he will stay with John though? And that because you, you've got the pace and just up the hill. Yeah. That's when he's pulling away and on the, the, the faster parts of the track. Yeah, it'd be, it's, it's, it'd be nice to try something different, but I really enjoy working with Ted and John, you know, and uh, the bike is absolutely fantastic, you know, it's uh, probably one of the best bikes I've ever ridden, to be honest, so and, uh, I just uh, I just love riding it. Many congratulations, well done. Thanks very much, cheers. Thanks very much, cheers, and we'll just jump over, sorry guys, just we'll grab in a, a quick word with, um, <laughs> there you go, oh dear. There's a great picture of uh, the Ulster Grand Prix launch of the little one sat on the bike as well. We'll just get round and grab word with Lee and uh, oh, more, more hair than both of us, to be honest. Do you want to? You, no, you can have the baby, it's all right. There you go. Swap the baby over. There you go. The little one goes. Well done, Lee. Hard work. Yeah, we, uh, we got a little bit confused in the pit stop because I knew some of the singles didn't have to stop. Is that right, Jimmy? Did yeah, you? Yeah. So I asked the guys, like, everybody pitted now. Is this the positions? Is this? And we're like, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. That's it. And I thought, oh, Chris so Swallow. I cruised, I cruised off. And I thought, first pit board said P2. So they obviously hadn't got the, the information or I don't know who was even doing it. But um, I thought, all right, I'll cruise on right now. Next one said P4 plus 15 or 20 or something. So I was like, oh, shit. Sugar, well done. Uh, that was good. Um, oh, sugar, and I got the hammer down to get to get back on the podium. So, um, yeah, bang on the bike. Look at the bikes, absolutely spotless. With little trouble uh, getting sixth gear a few times, but apart from that, she was running a running a dream. Yeah, Chris Swallow, it was you and him were battling quite a lot oh, for the lead. Yeah. So he he's obviously didn't have to pit on the Royal Enfield. But yeah. talks to the rest of the race, no problems at all, apart from maybe not getting sixth gear. Is that up the mountain or? Yeah, just just in general, it feels a little bit snatchy, but. If that's all you have to complain about on a classic bike, it's the credit to the whole team. But you can see the thing, it's absolutely work of art to look at. So big thanks to the whole uh, Davies team, like first time on it really. And obviously we haven't done a whole lot of practice laps. So uh, it was a perfect day and, and big thanks to everyone out there waving the programmes and stuff. It feels good. As a good mate of John McGuinness, how do you feel about him being back and at number one? I know you want to beat him, but how, how do you feel? Really upset. I'd, I'd prefer if he was third. And, nah, <laughs> you it's good. So it's so. good. It's good. Uh, I've had to listen to the grumpy old goat for the last year and a half. So um, yeah, hopefully now he's he's back up here and do a bit less whinging, and Becky might have an easier time as well. Well done, Lee. Cheers. Thank you very much. There's your first three in the Bennett's 500 CC Classic TT, and we'll hand back to you, Tim. Thanks very much indeed, Chris. Yes, what a win. For John McGuinness, uh, a second TT win on that pattern. 23 TT wins, of course. And, uh, yeah, an emotional win it was. Uh, with all the family there and a little change to the routine with uh, you and the son uh, dropping the penny into the leathers, the superstition he's always had. And uh, great to see him. And we will see him on the top step of the podium right in front of us uh, at the grandstand. And I'm sure he's going to get uh, a magnificent reception from those on the grandstand. A few more retirements. Number 32, John Lee Pemberton at Ballacrane. 
68, uh, Tony Tuttle at Guthrie's Memorial. Uh, Michael Rutter, well, he had that long stop out before Ramsey making uh, adjustments, uh, having a picnic, whatever it was he was doing out there. But uh, he did retire in the pits eventually, but uh, only after he tootled round for another couple of laps. And uh, number 54, Arthur Browning has uh, retired at the Hawthorne Inn, six and a three-quarter miles into the uh, TT course on the way out to Bella Crane uh, there for Arthur Browning. So let's go to uh, the uh, results uh, page. And there's just 11 uh, finishers so far. And uh, let's just have a look at... uh, uh, we've had uh, there's 22 bikes still out there 17 retirements i think that's more like 20 retirements now 20 uh, odd retirements uh, from uh, the number that started this uh, 57 so the old adage of first if you're going to finish first first you must finish very much uh, to the fore classic uh, tt racing is very attritional indeed so john mcginnis was the the winner on the pattern uh, one hour 22 minutes 52.747 seconds is his uh, race time it isn't a, a race record he was one minute and th-